Hey everyone, CPO here, and in this video, I'm gonna talk about the two by four method for the strut removal on my 2019 Golf R. It's funny, I just watched Paul from Deutsche Auto Parts do a video, poor guy, on the two by four method, and he's not a fan, but it kind of made me chuckle because I just did this process on my own car like a couple of days before his video came out. So I thought I would do a video showing you how it worked out for me, which was a lot easier. You just didn't do it right, all the comments say. Oh, there's definitely gonna be comments saying I didn't do it right, but like, <laughs> I mean, it did the job. So there's that. So let's get to it. Uh, first thing to know, you need to get the vehicle up off the ground, whether it be on uh, a lift like mine or jack stands. Uh, pull the tire off, unplug your uh, dynamic chassis control cable if you have one, and then we are gonna start removing things. I'm not gonna talk about a lot of detail in the camber plates. I do want to just talk specifically about using the two by four method, which ironically isn't even a two by four. Make sure you remove your level sensor before you start this process, because if you forget that, you could actually wreck it. So this strut bolt here, we're actually gonna use to connect the two by four. So uh, just so you know that, and then we're gonna use a strut spreader tool. And I'm spreading at the top and you can watch the strut sort of loosen up as I put that into place. I just wanna make sure I get that little bit of a drop. Now what I can do is remove that tool and then move it to below the tab on the strut. But first let's talk about this piece of wood. It's not really a two by four. This is a piece of scrap I got at Home Depot, was sitting in a trash can. I said, hey, can I have this? And they gave it to me and I cut it to length, but it's the, the width is shorter. It's maybe like, I don't know, two inches um, instead of four inches, something like that. But this piece of wood actually turned out to be a perfect size, so I use it. So now what I'm doing is just looking to see where I wanna drill my hole, which is gonna go up where we removed the sway bar in link. So I just made it big enough to hold that strut bolt. And then I'm gonna use that strut bolt, like I said, and the nut to attach the two by four to where the in link was connected. Just make sure when you get it up there, it's not binding any cables or anything like that. Your level sensor isn't uh, impacted or anything. Then I put a jack underneath it and started to put a little upper pressure on it as I spread the back of the housing at the knuckle. And again, there's a little tab on the back of the bottom of the strut and you have to get that tab to go around. So I start out at the top and then I move it down to the bottom of that little gap at the knuckle. And you can see how now the strut is free. I found that hitting the brake rotor works great at letting this just settle down. And I just ease up, putting, putting pressure, I'm compressing the spring by using the wood and the jack, and then hitting the rotor, which is allowing it to shake free. Uh, if you have one that's been in there for a while, you can use penetrating oil to sort of give it some lubrication. But that's it, once you break that free, uh, you've done your job and that was pretty easy. I don't know, Paul, seemed like it works well for me. Anyway, uh, yeah, so now I can remove that jack and the piece of wood. I no longer need that up there right now. And I'll go ahead and show you taking off the strut and then we'll put it back on also using the quote unquote two by four method. So I'm just loosening up these bolts on the top of the strut housing and then make sure I hold on to the strut as I remove that final one so I don't drop it out of there. And yeah, there we go. I'll do a different video on the camber plates, the ground control camber plates I'm installing, and that will go into some more detail like how to, how to get to this area up here, uh, remove the windshield wiper, all that stuff. All right, so once I get that sort of started up there, I'm gonna go ahead and put the piece of wood back in place. And the reason I'm doing that is to compress the spring to push the strut up against the upper strut mount. And then that way I can get all of those bolts done. And then the other thing is I'm getting the bottom of the strut raised up above the level of the knuckle so that I can fit it back in. And you see how I'm doing that right there. Now you can see the bottom of the strut by a few inches has a different texture um, that fits inside. So I'm looking at that as a guide to make sure I have it all the way in. So I'm using the strut spreader tool again to widen that up and you'll see that sort of start to slip in place. Now I have removed the wood and I'm just jacking the bottom of the lower control arm at the those little bolts for the lower ball joint. And I'm raising, putting pressure on the knuckle, pushing it up. 
and you can see there uh, that settled into place and you can see how now that edge where the um, the texture changes is settled down in place. So I went ahead and put my stuff all back together. That strut bolt gets torqued down. And then uh, fun tip, this is a torque spec with a, I think it, I forget what it was, like 60 or 70 Newton meters plus a 90 degree turn. I put a mark on the bolt and then uh, use a breaker bar and rotate it for that 90 degrees. Uh, or I think this was even 180 degrees now that I think about it. And I just watched for that mark to rotate 180 degrees. Put my brackets back on, plug in my DCC cable, put my uh, sway bar in link back on, torque it down. Do not forget to reconnect your level sensor there on the lower control arm. That's the one that I almost always forget about because you can't really see it from the front. And then I think, oh crap, I need to do that. So don't forget that. Then the wheel and tire goes right back on, get everything put together and Boom, you're done. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.